This week's videos are sponsored by an app that I've been using since before we even partnered with them, and that app is Rocket Money. More on them after the reaction, people. Citizens of the Reject Nation, I cannot do a Clint Eastwood impression, but we are here. It is John and Aaron Alexander. Are you? Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, I hope you do, because today we're not checking out that movie, which I also haven't seen. We're watching Gran Torino, a classic of the later period of Sir Clinton of the East Woods career. Aaron, are you excited? I am excited. This strains my face. I can't. I can't hold that face for too long. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know how Clint man. does it, man. I don't know, he's, man. He's the pro. He's the expert. Leave a like for the Clint face, and uh, if you could com like you can't comment that, but you know, like leave your favorite Clint Eastwood movie down below and make the Clint face while you type it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to get notified every time a Clint Eastwood classic or any other movie comes your way here on the channel. Also, big thanks to the folks over at Prepper for chopping down these highlights. It is a task and we appreciate them verily for their help. As well, thanks to all the super sexy rejects who have been coming over to patreon.com slash the real rejects and joining us for the full and complete Gran Torino experience. See everything that doesn't make these reaction highlight reels. As well as all the shows and movies Greg and I got streaming over there with reaction highlights and watch alongs included. All of the other rejects watch alongs. It's all there! It's all in a one-stop shop. Get your fistful of reactions today. Aaron, you got anything else to tell the people before we jump in? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling ugly. Oh. But. You're looking good in that RejectNationShop.com t-shirt. I'll tell you, you that much. Thank you, baby. That's, that's a million dollar baby right there. Let's, let's do this I'm thing. I'm ready to share this experience with you, John. The Obama chair. <laughs> good. Had to get one in. Good, we got it. We got every 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 reference possible. There are no other references. Let's do this thing. I think Clint is playing the piano himself. Oh yeah, most what I hope is that we fade in on Clint just tickling the ivories, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a Ford Grand Torino. I only think of Starsky and Hutch when I see that name. This isn't the car movie? <laughs> <laughs> I got faked out for a second. I thought this was the church Greg and I grew up in. Oh, it's not. But it's not. I'm real sorry about Dorothy Walt. Oh, no. She was a real peach. Thanks for coming out. Ugh. Oh. No oh, belly button rings in church. Tackle her. <laughs> Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> we expect Dad's still living in the 50s. He expects his granddaughter to dress a little more modestly. You know, when your kid's wearing a Lions jersey, I'm sure Dad appreciates that. Oh, he loves that. There's nothing anyone can do that won't disappoint the old man. It's inevitable. You know, that's why we stopped doing Thanksgiving. Oh, no. What are you going to do with him? Oh, don't you think he's gonna get in trouble over there? All by himself in the old neighborhood? Gotta unfriend him on Facebook. Why don't you have him move in with you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeesh, man, at a funeral of all places. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's rocking out. Death is often a bittersweet occasion to us Catholics. Huh. Bitter in the pain, sweet in the salvation. <laughs> That is a bar. For those of us who know the salvation that awaits. You always look like something stinks. <laughs> Stank face. Stank face. Stay with it. And that's why you have to turn to the Lord. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's what he's talking about. I'm going to find that Jesus. <laughs> I have a feeling that sermon will be a heavy theme across the movie. Mm -hmm. We'll give that away. Live the legend. Dad? Whoa. No. Wow. They're in Platoon E Company, March 2nd, 1952, Korea. Where's Korea? <laughs> Let's bust out the globe, kids. A lot of people showed up after the service, huh? You know, I suppose they heard there's going to be a lot of ham. <laughs> cool, I found a medal. Look oh, at no. this. Oh, no. Oh, uh -oh. oh, boy. Get out of my basement. <laughs> Oh, that's the majority of his dialogue in this movie. It's just grunts. 
I can see it. How much longer do we have to stay? This ghetto is a dead zone for my cell, and I'm bored. Jeez. Oh, how hard life must be. Grandpa, what would you like some help with this for chairs? No. <laughs> you probably just painted your nails. Because you're a girl. I hate you, granddaughter. Girls don't work. Although, to be fair, she is written to be the worst. <laughs> <laughs> It's a housewarming right next to a funeral reception. How many swap rats can you get in one room? Woo! Why don't you tell me how you really feel? Him being in the Korean War, I'm sure, does not help matters. <laughs> right. Hey, let's go. He's going to love this. Mm -hmm. You can share that together. Grandpa, when did you get the uh, vintage car? <laughs> Back when it was new. 1972. I never knew you had a cool old car. Uh, it's been years since before you were born. So, what are you going to do with it when you, like, die? <laughs> Buried with me. Bury me in it. Then what about that super cool retro couch that you have in the den? Because I was thinking I'm going to state next year, and I think it would look really good in my dorm room, and I don't have any furniture at oh, all. Oh, uh, wow. Yep, that is the the appropriate response. Yeah. Who are you? I live next door. Come on, get the shit out of your mouth. Tell I, me um, what you want. Oh, my God. Do you have Jesus Christ. Cables? Car is oh, whatever. we don't have any jumper cables. Have some respect. We're in mourning here. Is that a is that a, is that a, a slur? A slur? We, we don't term? know. Your wife and I became quite close these last few months. She asked that I watch over you when she passed on. I told her I watch over my entire flock, but she made me promise I'd keep an extra sharp eye on you. <laughs> Appreciate the kindness you've shown to my wife. Now that you've spoken your piece, why don't you go tend to some of your other sheep? <laughs> yeah, tend to your sheeple. <laughs> D Dorothy mentioned specifically that it was her desire for you to go to confession. She said she couldn't remember the last time you went. Is that so? It is. So let's do it right here. Well, I confess that I never really cared for church very much. The only reason I went was because of her. And I confess that I have no desire to confess to a boy that's just out of the seminary. Oof. Wish I could help, Dad, but uh, gotta get the kids home. <laughs> Fine, just go. I'll call you in a few and see how you're doing. I'm sure he's really looking forward to that. Show you the buy American. Uh, Did you see the way he looked at the truck? Jeez. So he's rice burner this, burner that, you know? Even at mom's funeral, he can't let it go. Woof. Well, what do you expect, Mitch? The man worked at a Ford plant for all those years. So he's a patriot. <laughs> yes. This is an interesting portrait so far. Whoa. Yeah, to start, to start him off is... Yeah, Oh God! I was yeah. Say you're gonna have a flashback or well, something. You must have one hell of an arc to start him off this racist and grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Get her to marry Walt. <laughs> He's just a kid. <laughs> Uh, he's just low in the totem pole right now. Oh, okay. Fascinating. Ooh. Yeah, I've never seen a, yeah, what are a these tradition rituals? like that. Yeah. If anybody knows, comment below. I would love to know more. I get the basic gist, but live life, grow old, and get grumpy. Just me, my Ford, and my dog. Yeah. <laughs> he does have the most American dog. Or ski. To move into this neighborhood. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Jeepers. Yeah. Ah! Oh, 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 damn! damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mine's bigger than yours. Thought I'd drop by and see how you're doing. I haven't seen you in church in a while. Well, now that you've done your good deed, why don't you just take off down the road? I'd really like to talk, Mr. Kowalski. Not in this lifetime, Sonny. Wow. You have a problem with me, Mr. Kowalski? You don't want to know. No, I do. It's your red hair. Well, I think you're an overeducated 27 year old version who likes to hold the hands of old oh, ladies who are superstitious and promises them eternity. Woof. I mean, as much as he is like the portrait of like a classic, like patriotic American, it's interesting that he isn't like faithful at all. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Wait, what? Why? Wow. I don't get what people have to gain from this. That's my little cousin over there. Sure, that's your cousin, man? Oh my god. That's my little cousin. Get him. Let's go down and see what the they doing over there. Let's go. It was Rod. We're about to start a gang war. Oh boy. Just car Whoa. ride smack talk. Oh, ouch, hello. Ouch. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, dude. Whoa. This is a fascinating portrait. Yeah. Everyone's got prejudice. Dude, get in the man. car. Man, get in the car, man. Show her. Dog, we just bailed your ass out, dog. Come on, dog. Get the f in here. Yeah. Come on, man. We just bailed your ass out, dog. Come on. Say, I don't want no smoke. Come on, dude. Come on, child, man. Yo, man, let's go. Come on, squad. You got that bitch. Hey, get it. They're going to start harassing you. So now that we saved you before we beat your ass. <laughs> Damn, now they're starting it too. Yeah. Wow. Why is it not enough? Uh, he's trying to recruit him, I guess. He probably knows deep down that, yeah, they they probably want him to join, especially if they save his ass. Right. Leverage him. What's up, Tal? What are you doing, little man? Oh, boy. Why are you doing women's work? <laughs> women's work. Can't just come talk to my little cousin. He doesn't want to talk to me. I'm here, right? Hey, spider, who that? <laughs> Yeah, get the impression he's the black sheep of the family. Spider? Is that what he just called you, Fong? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And there's something wrong with Spider? What are you doing here? Spider Fong. Come on, ride with us. Come on. Come on, chew with us. He's trying to roll in the garden, man. Well, cuz, right? Look, a brother to Spider is Whoa. a brother to me. Come on. <sighs> Seems dangerous. Intense peer pressure. Yeah. See, Bobby? Woman works. Man loses his sausage. What do I have to do? Spider told me a boy next door got a badass web. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my little cousin being a little man. After all the coaxing in the world. Right. Didn't really seem like you had much of a choice. That's a nice call. 1972, Grand Torino. Uh oh. My man's the gearhead over here. Oh, I've got one. There's a Mexican, a Jew, and a <laughs> guy go into a bar. <laughs> the bartender looks up and says, Get the f out of here. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Just came down to talk to Walt, if that's okay. You are persistent, aren't you? Promised your wife. Yeah. All right, let's get a booze. Yeah, how are you honoring her memory? Because I'm trying my ass off over here. I promised your wife I'd get you to go to confession. Now, why would you do that? She was very insistent. She made me. She twisted my nipples until I agreed. Let's talk about something else. Life and death. Oh. What the hell do you know about life and death? Yeah. I'm a priest. You get up and preach about life and death, yeah. but all you know is what you learned in priest school. Death is bittersweet. It's sort of bitter in its pain, but sweet in its salvation. Oh, boy. Uh oh. That's what you know about life and death, and it's pathetic. Twist my sermon. What do you know, Mr. Kowalski? I know a lot. I lived for almost three years in Korea with his bikes. I killed 50 men. We shot men, stabbed them with bayonets, hacked 17 year olds to death with. Your experience shaped a totally different experience of life and death, man. Stuff I'll remember till the day I die. Sure. Horrible things, the things I'll live with. Huh. And what about life? Ain't much to it now. I survived the war, got married, had a family. The classic American thing. Sounds like you know a lot more about death than you do living. Mm. Oh, we can help each other. Preacher bars? Maybe so, Father. Maybe so. It's like you got one. You got one on me. Oh, yeah. yeah you did what society told you. You had to, to live. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Let's go. My man is ready for this. He, he waits for days like this. Oh, yeah. Woo! Sheesh! Dang! <laughs> what kind of rifle is that? It's like bolt action. I was playing with the hey, music too. What oh. do we got? What do we got? Oh uh, yeah, he got oh, you. No. Got you. No. He's been waiting, right? Oh boy. Oh the no! Swinging light. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Oh wow. That was a pretty intense little sequence. Come on, let's go, man. Get in. Man, get in. <coughs> I live just next oh, door. Oh, he's bleeding. Oh. Hit your face in the concrete? Oh, boy. Hey. Ain't no one getting back in here. <laughs> hey, good morning, Dad. It's your number one son, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's after one in the afternoon. It's not morning. Uh, afternoon, then. <laughs> 
<laughs> just calling to see how you're doing. Just uh, anything new with the old neighborhood? No. Smooth sailing. Yeah. Okay. Good. D- dig a little deeper. Number one. You wouldn't happen to still know that guy from the plant that has the Lions season tickets? Ugh. <sighs> Uh, that's all you need him for. <laughs> Shall go bottom. That's awesome. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> you don't care about your dad. Oh, it's a sport. Mexico. Nice color blue on that. Yeah, it's like a teal. Man and his dog. Man and his dog in his car. And his cigarette. Yeah. And his porch. And his beer. The American dream. How it's sold. That's who he really loves is the car. His wife was fine, but the car is his real. The car is his baby. Yeah. He's leaving it in the driveway. That's not smart. That seems intentional. Or it's very not smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think he wants them to come back. Oh, yeah. He's, he's ready for the smoke this time. What are you guys doing here? Can I just come hang out with my little cousin? I suppose you could. Come on, man. We're going to give you another shot, man. Come on. Don't go, Tal. Mind your own business, girl. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come. Ugh. He doesn't want any part of this, dog. Leave him alone. Yeah, he just wants to read his book. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, dang. What if I feel like Clint's going to break it up? Yeesh. With a gunshot or something. Interesting camera work in this movie. Whoa, oh, not the gnomes! Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Get off my lawn. It's the line. <laughs> there it is. Lawn. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said get off my lawn now. Crazy, go back in the house. Oh, the music, like the, the old military music. He's back. He's back in the 70s. You used to stack like you five feet high in Korea. Use your first sandbag. Ooh, sandbags. Ugh. Oh, my God. You better watch your back. It's crazy. Watch your back. Watch your back. Watch your, watch your, watch your back. What's up? What's up, man? What's that, old man? Thank you. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I think this story is an interesting reversal of the story we see with like the one family in the gentrified neighborhood, but he's like the one holdout in like in a the, neighborhood yeah. that's falling down. Yeah. <laughs> Just got him by the stove. Oh. Leave him something nice. Wow. Oh wow. Oh my god. Oh wow. This. He has literally never been given a gift before or a small feast. Oh, jeez. Wow. No, dude. No. No, no, no. Come on. No more. No more. No more. They'd be cooking to... for you and everything. Don't throw the food out. Is this like a guilt thing? Are they trying to welcome him to the neighborhood? Kind of? Or not welcome it's him. For him, gratitude, but... I think. Gratitude, yeah. Why are you bringing me all this garbage anyway? Because you saved Tao. Mm. I kept a bunch of jabbering. Off of my life. Well, you're a hero oh, wow. to the neighborhood. I'm not a hero. Too bad they think you are. <laughs> Too bad. How wants to say something? I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For trying to steal your car. Oh, he told your family. Wow. Let me tell you something, boy. You step on this property again, you're done. Oh, whoa. He's so angry and jaded and lonely, man. It's funny, like, Clint is playing, like, the most, cl- like, elevated, older Clint kind of character, <laughs> in a way. But it is fascinating, because it's also, like, kind of the anti of what you'd expect. Like, you know he has combat experience, but he's not exactly a badass. He's just a grumpy old dude. Right. I do work with some of the Mon gangs, and I heard there was some trouble in the neighborhood. Why didn't you call the police? Huh. Huh. You didn't trust them either. I prayed that they would show up, but nobody answered. Mm. <laughs> Wow. Someone could have been killed. We're talking life and death here. Yeah, you've been talking about life and death. I've been thinking about our conversation on life and death. Horrible things that won't leave you. Yeah, trauma. It seems it would do you good to unload some of that burden. Maybe in a confession. I do know about forgiveness, and I've seen a lot of men who have confessed their sins and left their burdens behind them. Stronger men than you. Ooh. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Padre. (laughs) Came here with your guns loaded this time. Yeah, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've been practicing. And you're right about one thing. About stronger men than me reaching their salvation. Allah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're wrong about something else. The thing that haunts a man the most is what he isn't ordered to do. It's what he wasn't Ooh. able to do. There. Oh. 
finally look nice. like a human being again. Mm. Oh, his haircut? Just cut, no, they just cut away and let you ruminate on that. Yeah. I'd be 10 bucks, Walt. Jesus Christ, Mark. Let's get every yeah, slur we can. Jesus Christ. It's been 10 bucks for the last five years, you hard nosed pull son of a bitch. <laughs> he just races <laughs> every, every which direction. Everybody catching strays. John C Carroll Lynch knows how to communicate with this man. <laughs> Oh, Scott! Baby Scott! Baby Scott Eastwood! Oh! oh. Little baby Scott! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. Come on, check this out. Uh-oh. Bring that little tight over here. Come here, girl. Oh, no. What you doing in my neighborhood, boy? Let's go down the corner spot, you know? Get some CDs. It's all good, bro. Ugh. <laughs> you, you just picked this accent up today. Oh, God. Wig of Scott is different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all come down here for, huh? You, you here to bring me this little present? Ugh. Ugh. I'm going to take real good care of her. No. Oh, jeez. We're about to get a Clint N bomb. I think we are. I think we are. What's your name, girl? My name? It's take a crude, overly obvious come on to every woman who walks past and cram it. That's my name. Ooh. Ooh. You've been saving that one up. Hey, you need to keep your bitch on the leash. Put a choke chain on that. Yanked that motherfucker. Of course, right to the stereotype of stories. Uh, and a bitch in the same sentence. She ain't scared. Yeah. She's a cool character. Yeah, grit. Yeah, Moxie kid. She got Moxie. Stop! <laughs> now the movie is called F 150. The fuck you looking at, old man? The hell he's up to? Ooh. You better get your ass on, honky, while I still let you. <laughs> oh, let's go. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> is that a monkey wrench? Or is that also a gun? No, that's a wrench. Yeah. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while that you shouldn't have f***ed with? <laughs> Let's go. That was very good. That's me. Why don't you get your ass up out of here? Kick your old wrinkly white ass. Ooh. I wish oh, you would. Oh, it's reaching for it. Let's Feeling lucky, punk. Go. <laughs> <laughs> get in the truck. <laughs> you need to put a finger. Oh, 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 oh there it is. he's got the real thing. You knew it. And don't listen, do you? Now get in the truck. Don't get in the truck, <laughs> wow. Way to go, man. Shut up. Oh. <laughs> These guys don't want to be your bro, and I don't blame them. Now get your fave petty ass on down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. That must have been a fun day on set for father and son. All right. Not that it's cool to be a grumpy old racist, but this is about as cool as a grumpy old racist has ever appeared. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't disagree. <laughs> I thought you Asian girls were supposed to be smart. Let's go. Oh, jeez. And what about that goofball guy? You were with? Is that a date or something? <laughs> you be hanging out with your own people, the other Hmong. You mean Hmong? Yeah. Hmong. Not Hmong. Whatever. Where the hell is Hamong? I, I mean, Mong, anyway. <laughs> hey, he's, he's trying. He's trying a little bit. No, Hmong isn't a place. It's a people. Like Asgard. Exactly. Well, how did you end up in my neighborhood then? Why didn't you stay there? It's a Vietnam thing. We fought on your side. And when the Americans quit, the communists started killing all the Hmong. Oof. Well, I don't know how you ended up in the Midwest. Snow on the ground six months out of the year. What is it? Jungle people wanting to be in the great frozen time? Kill people. Jesus, <sighs> You have a lot of patience for this racist man, bro. <laughs> About that dimwit brother here. He's a little slow or something. So how is actually really smart? He doesn't know which direction to go in. He needs a mentor. Mm-hmm. Long girls are here fit and better. The girls go to college and the boys go to jail. Dang. Whoa. True, especially in the environment that you kind of live in. Yeah, I mean, like, she could be a nurse or something. I'm sure they need that around here. What's Tao going to do? That old hag hates my ass. <laughs> yeah, you hate her, too. Show it to her. You just got to spit bigger. Show her dominance. Go over there. Shoot your shot, man. You could be reading papers on the porch Your together. Day today. Day His day. wife just died. <gasps> you have to make a choice between two life paths. Second chances come your way. Extraordinary events culminate in what might seem to be an anti-climax. Your lucky numbers are 11, 78, and 99. Is he reading his dog's horoscope? What a load of shit. Mm. <laughs> What's your sign, man? Are you a Scorpio? <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Jesus Come on, Christ, guys. kiddo. All right. Oh. How about that? How about that, Daisy? 
Daisy. Hmm. My cute dog. Good girl. Give it to me. Here you go. Oh. How is that? It's like a picker oh, upper. Oh, pooper scooper. So you can uh, reach stuff. It makes things a lot oh. easier. Oh, never mind. I probably wouldn't be effective as a pooper scooper anyway. <laughs> it's a phone. With giant numbers. Oh, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I can really see that. Yeah, you worked hard your whole life. Maybe it's time you started thinking about you know, taking it easier. Take it easy. What were you thinking about the house? You know, what with mom gone, it's got to be a lot to maintain oh. around here. Mm -hmm. Let alone clean. And, um... I don't know, you're here all alone. Yeah, no, there are these great places. Yeah. There, you know, these communities. Yeah, you knew that was coming. You know, the people are like you, active and alert, but are alone and would benefit from being around folks their own age. Oh. What a birthday party this is. These places are nothing like what you think they no, are. No, they're great. They're beautiful. Ugh. These are top notch oh, resorts. God. You're old, Dad. Go live with other old people. Oh, they have wonderful stores. You can buy new shoes. They're amazing. They really are. We have a good... <laughs> Get out of my house. house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kicking us out on his birthday. I told you this was a bad idea. I know. You were right. Oh. What's well, not going to help he wants? It doesn't feel like help. It doesn't feel like help. It feels like you're trying to get rid of him. At least they were smart enough to not come. Goddamn kids have more sense than we do. Ugh, man. We're having a barbecue. You want to come over? What do you think? Damn, he drinks a lot of those a day. Fine, right here. <sighs> She's my favorite character. I She's like her. great, yeah. Come on over and get something to eat. We've got beer, too. Oh. Is it Blue Ribbon? I might as well drink with strangers rather than... Drink alone after all. It is my birthday. Liquid lunch. Happy birthday, Wally. Wally. Don't call me Wally. <laughs> Wally. <laughs> I'm sure that'll come back around. Well, you know, perhaps plenty of beer. How's it say? When I'm home, Molly. Is that a smile I saw? <laughs> <laughs> What's she saying? Oh, no, she's not. Yeah, no, she didn't. <laughs> she didn't do that. She didn't do that. <laughs> it's awesome. He probably has more respect for her that way, though. Hey, do we should go into the other room? Oh, my God. Sorry. Never touch one person on the head. Not even a child. Oh, really? Most people believe that the soul resides on the head. Sounds dumb, but fine. <laughs> That's all you got to do. <laughs> staring that guy down. He's been staring at me the whole evening. That's Korku. He's a Lord Family Shaman. I guess fit though. And what's that? Some sort of a witch doctor or something? Something like that. Yeah. Booga booga. Booga booga. Hill people, not jungle people. Korku's interested in you. Ooh. Hmm. He would like to read you. It'd be rude not to allow him this. It's a great honor. Ooh. Yeah, sure. Fine by me. I'm going to start to smile a little bit. He is like 20 beers deep. This <laughs> <laughs> is so true. <laughs> That's what it takes to get him regular. He says that people do not respect you. They don't even want to look at you. Mm. <laughs> says the way you live, your food has no flavor. Oh, no. You're worried about your life. Oh, no. You made a mistake in your past life, like a mistake that you did. You're not satisfied with? Oh, shit. Mm. He says you have no happiness in your life. It's like you're not at peace. Digging deep, boy. You gotta find peace, man. You gotta find your people. <laughs> are, are you all right? Oh, bleeding? Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. Oh, is he dying? No. Well, that is never good. Coughing up blood. Oh, sheesh. God, I have more in common with these than I do with my own spoiled, rotten family. And what can we learn from that? Happy mm. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> you, you were bleeding. I, know, I, I, I bit my tongue. Why don't we go down and get some of that good food, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Will you learn? <laughs> if he says it enough times, it'll become endearing. <laughs> I love this. This is great. <laughs> He's center frame, too, as they all like feed him. You gotta feel loved. Come on, you glutton. What for? Mingle. Mingle. Yeah. We're mingling right here. We just got to the table. You told me not to leave you alone. Thank you very much, but I have to, I have to go now. Uh, You're enjoying yourself. I, I'm really enjoying this so far. Yeah, same. Luke is over there. Yeah, the kid who stole my Grand Torino. My brother, Tal. Tried to anyway, yeah. He got toad. Toad. I feel like he might be a little neuro spicy. Yeah. 
Neuro spicy gang represent. Neuro spicy. What's this? A uh, little rice liquor. Here, try it. Ooh, like a cousin of sake or something. Yeah, I'm curious. I guess there must be a broad variety of rice liquors, and they're not Japanese, but yeah. Oh, make me want some rice liquor. Let's go. Let's go. My friends and I were just wondering what you're doing here. <laughs> Hi, Walt. I'm Yua. 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 What do you do? I fix things. Like what? I took old Matt Mary to doctors get a prescription for <laughs> fixed up. <laughs> I take back the subtlety. He is definitely a little drunk, a little, a little tipsy. Well, I'm about to take off. Enjoy yourself. Okay. Yum yum. Yum yum. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Aw, poor kid. Relax, Brad. Moths to the flame. I'd look down to if I was you. No. You know, I knew you were a dipshit the first time I ever saw you. But I never thought you were worse with women than you are at stealing cars. Toad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Mario reference? Yeah, well, you're blowing it with that girl who was there. Not that I give two shits about a toad like you. No, it's okay. When we don't see Clint, he's just playing Mario Kart <laughs> <laughs> all day, 24-7. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I may oh. not be the most pleasant person to be around, but I got the best woman who was ever on this planet to marry me. You're letting Click Clack Ding Dong and Charlie Chan just <laughs> walk out with Miss What's-Her-Face. <laughs> she likes you, you know, though I don't know why. Dang. Who? Yum Yum. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you all? Yeah, yum yum. Yeah, nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> Heir to the yum yum donuts fortune. Well, I gotta go. Good day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this must have been such a fun shoot. I never expected Clint Eastwood to be so funny. <laughs> no more, please. I <laughs> is, that, is that that good shit? Is that chicken dumpling? Chicken dumpling. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I was going to say, you didn't get your to-go plate from earlier. All right. I take it all to go. All right. What's going on? Tal is here to make amends. He's here to work for you. Oh. oh. My mama said he dishonored the family, and now he has to work off his debt. It's very important to my mom that you accept, and it would be an insult if you refuse. Oh, boy. If he doesn't want to do it, then, then let's just go. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> right in time with each other. She's getting insulted on all sides. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seems like neither of them have the choice in the matter. Yeah. Joseph and Mary, these mung broads are like badgers. <laughs> hey, you, at least you're starting to say it right. Son of a bitch, I never thought he'd show. <laughs> How early is that? Oh, it's probably like mid afternoon. All right, what are you good at? Nothing. I gotta know what you can do. I, I don't know. What do you need <laughs> done? See that tree right there? You just go over there and count the birds. <laughs> what do you have for me today? You want me to wash the paint dry? <laughs> don't get flipped with me, boy. <laughs> I don't care if you insult me or say racist things. Because you know what? I'll take it. Yeah, of course you'll take it. Because you have no teeth, you have no balls, kid. Ugh. Fight him. I'm stuck here. So why don't you just find something useful for me to do? Unlike you, I'm not useless and I maintain my own property. Let him do that. Let him hose the garden. How long do I have you for? <laughs> Got a full ass fixer upper for you. Till next Friday. All right. Go get the ladder out of the garage. <laughs> you can take that gutter and nail it back up. I'm tired of looking at it the last three years. <laughs> it's not even working on his own house and someone else's house. I was going to say, what's. Not that Clint would care, but I'm like, yeah, does anybody have, like, does anybody own this property? Like, does the city feel a type of way about them doing this? <laughs> I guess the city doesn't care because it's in such poor repair. It's a poor neighborhood. It's just, just abandoned. Oh. And to paint oh, it too. Getting a little muscle going on oh, there. Oh, he is. Wow. All this before next Friday by himself, huh? It's yeah. Pretty impressive. Dude. Let's start a whole ass business. Seriously. Happy the gang kids left him alone after that incident on the porch or on the lawn. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll never appear again. Yep, that's the last we've seen of them. Said no movie ever. You can have told clear out the big wasp nest under our porch. Ooh. Wasp nest. I think we can handle that after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, got a full no. ass itinerary for him. Full schedule. Oh shit. Uh, 
Oh, Damn. Shit. That's, some, yeah, that's that real blood. Yeah. That's not diluted with saliva. It's okay. He just bites his tongue most days. It's, it's my last day. So what else do you have for me to do? Take the day off. You've done enough. No, he's got to complete it. Toad. Nothing. Never mind. Oh, what were you going to say? Maybe, we'll, maybe he's going to invite him in. He's going to remind him about that wasp nest. Hmm. It's an interesting way to do a montage of sorts. Yeah. Kind of speed through time. Yeah. Clint out there on the porch. Yeah. I looked over your paperwork, and I think we should immediately start a full battery of tests. What happened to Dr. Feldman, my regular doctor? Dr. Feldman retired three years ago. Oh, wow. I'm his replacement, Dr. Chu. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. This is slow progress. <laughs> hey, Dad. I bet you it's, uh, it's me, your dad. Oh. oh, no, he found out. How's everything going? Fine. Everybody's everybody's great. Good. How about work? Oh. Mm. Speaking of busy, uh, I got a lot on my plate right now, so if there's oh. not something pressing... Uh... Elaborate on stuff. Talk to him. Why don't you call me this weekend? Sure. Oh. It's nice talking to you, Dad. Yeah. He didn't barely even talk. Right. You said like 10 words. Well, that's a little concerning. Was that just calling a little blue? Oh, I know that car. You probably oh, shouldn't be shit. smoking with whatever condition you got going on there. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do you know about faucets? I know a lot about them, boy. Stand aside. Sand aside. I love the feet. Must be 100 degrees in here. Just turn on the fan. Oof. The ceiling, though. Things gonna fall Crack right any out. moment, right. Fall apart any second. Yeah, turn dude, it off. That thing's Please gonna fly off. away. <laughs> Where'd you get all this stuff? Every tool in here has a purpose. Everything has a job to do. What's that? It's a post hole digger. Yeah. Wire cutters. You know it's a troll. Come on. <laughs> That's a tack hammer. You can't fool me, kid. <laughs> Pass the quiz. I can't afford my all this stuff. I guess even a bonehead like you could understand that a man acquires this over a period of 50 years. All right, look. Here. Oh. Take these three items right here. You can have this. WD-40, vice grips, some uh, duct tape. Start your own tool bench. His salt can do half of household chores with just those three things. Is that true? Can you really do like half of your home repair with... Oh, oh, sheesh. Oh, boy. No, no, no. I just saw you cut the blood. That's not good. You should really see a doctor. About that. Those guys were here. What about them? Just a gang. But what were they doing here? They were going to take me away. They were kind of pissed that I blew my first initiation. They're coming to take me away. Hoo hoo hee hee ha ha. What was your initiation supposed to be? I'm stealing your car. Not my baby. My Gran Torino. Christ, old Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. I've never heard it either. <laughs> I'll start saying that. Christ, old Friday. And weekends too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, th this this is this not okay. Could be no, yeah. Jesus Christ, by yourself, man. How's any one person gonna get that thing up the stairs? Toad, you hey, got a <laughs> ha, love it. Here's the deal. I take the top because that's the heaviest. I pull on that. I don't. Mm -mm. I don't like that. It's gonna crush you, kid. No, yeah, I'll take the top. It looks pretty heavy. Look, I'm not crippled. I've got the top. If you don't let me take the top, I ain't helping. I'm gonna go back home. Now listen to me, Zip. Now you listen, old man. Ooh. I'm here because you need help. So it's either top or I'm out of here. Uh, growing your teeth. Right. Growing, growing them, them balls. Just don't let it slip out of your little girl hand. <laughs> You're growing some testicles, boy. What are you gonna do with it? Oh, sell it, I guess. How much? 60 bucks. I'm tired of having it sit around down in the basement there. You looking for a freezer? I want a basement. Dylan's just one kind of died. Okay. 25 bucks and it's yours. Yeah. Oh, you just had 60. I know, but this will save me money putting an ad in the paper. Come on, let's wheel it. Aww. Uh, he, nah, he gave you the friends and family discount. Come uh -huh. on. Toad, washing the car that he tried to steal from you? She called him Toad now. He misses one spot. He's doing it all over again, too. <laughs> Those flies out of there. You're a good man, Wally. I wish our father would have been more like you. Don't go calling me Wally. 
<laughs> he was really hard on us, really traditional, and really old school. Yeah, well, I'm old school. Yeah, yeah. but you're an American. American old school is different. You know, you should quit. That's bad for you. That's what I said. What's that emblem supposed to mean anyways? Your ancient Club Scout emblem? <laughs> <laughs> First cavalry. I've had it since 51. Wow. So, what do you want to do with your life, kid? I was thinking about maybe sales. Yep. <laughs> Dream big. I worked in the Ford factory for 50 years. I put the steering column in this uh, Grand Torino in 1972. Oh, you are old. So cool. <laughs> so, you want to be in sales? Yeah. Thinking about going to school, maybe? School costs money. Yeah. Well, maybe you should get a job. You can't just sit there and spread mulch in my garden the rest of your life. I mean, you could. Well, what kind of job could I ever get? You're right. Nobody would ever hire you. <laughs> Look, I'm just kidding. I get a job. Like what? Well, how about construction? Hey. And I know people in the trades. Of course, I have to make a little adjustment and man you up a little bit. Oh, montage. Train hard. Oh. And I think you ought to date Miss Yum Yum, too. And carbon off the valves. Let's get down to business and train this mong. Teach him how to get girls so he can date. Yum, yum. <laughs> we got there. We got there. We got there. Who's the nip? Oh, he's a, uh, a kid from next door. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a montage of every time he insults his kid. I go on out and come back in and talk to him like a man. This is how we say <laughs> I love you. It's how we show affection. What's up, you old Italian prick? Get out of my shop before I blow your head off, you goddamn smoking guns. Wow, dude. What the hell are you doing? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> you, do, you don't just come in and insult the man in his own shop. What happens if you meet some stranger, you get the wrong one, he's going to blow your head right off. Jesus Christ. Yeah, kid, why don't you start with, um, hi. Yeah, just come in and say, uh, sir, I'd like a haircut if you have the time. Yeah, be polite, but don't kiss ass. <laughs> Talk about people who are not in the room. Uh, you could bitch about your boss. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a job, a car, or a girlfriend. So bitch about that. I want you to turn around and go outside and come back and don't talk about having no job, no car, no girlfriend, no future, no... <laughs> <laughs> that, that spiraled quickly. It did. This man has no filter. It's so funny. This whole sequence was improv Excuse me, sir. I need a haircut. If you ain't too busy, you old Italian son of a bitch prick barber. <laughs> Does my ass hurt from all the guys in my construction job? Oh, no. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. A little practice, but we're good. We're getting there. I have no idea how to feel about this mentorship. <sighs> I guess it's going to teach you how to survive. Yeah. You're going to be a little more racist, but... <laughs> You start saying slurs to your own people, but you know, you'll, you'll be better in the long run, I guess. We need a little therapy. Just uh, look them straight in the eye, and a man can tell a lot by your handshake. Put those in your back pocket. Yes. Yes. Very good. Let me see your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> What do we got here, Walt? He knows construction, and uh, and he's a smart kid. He'll do anything you need him for. You sure? Yeah. Oh, God. You speak English? Yes, sir. You got a vehicle? Not at the moment. Taking the bus for now. Jesus Christ, you don't have a car? My head gets get cracked, and the goddamn prick at the shop wants to bend me over for 2100 Oh, please. Damn. I just replaced the tranny in my Tahoe, and the sons of bitches me hard. You're learning. Come on in on Monday, and uh, we'll find something for you to do. Thanks, Mr. Kennedy. It's Tim. You owe me one, Walt. How about you just uh, hand over them keys to that Grand Torino? Uh, what the hell's oh. everybody want my car? <laughs> it's interesting. He does spend most of his time driving this truck. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's never driven that Grand Torino as far as we've seen so far, right? Yeah. It's just the catalyst to bring everyone together. <laughs> it's the crux of the movie. Here we go. You can use one of these. Oh, yeah. Tape measure, always good to have. I can't afford any of this. I'll cover it. You can oh. pay me back on your first paycheck. Hey. Provided your boss pays you right. decently. Oh, uh, no. No. Uh -oh. Alleyway, bad news. Bad news, alleyway. No, 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 no. Chain link no. fence, yep. alleyway, sure bad enough. news. Cousins are coming. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, it's okay. You can whip them with the tools. What's up, homeboy? What you doing? Oh, I thought more people were going to get out of the car. Where you coming from, man? Home from work. Not that you guys would know much about that. Oh. Who bought this shit for you? Your dad? What do you guys want with me? Your dad bought this shit for you? Keep your hands yeah, off my stuff. Give me that shit. Come on. This, 
It's a helmet. Keep your hands off my stuff. Smash it, my damn. Oh, uh, wow. Yo, smoke, Ooh. Oh, no. That's a durable tape measure. Why? Why are you messing with this kid, bro? No, you're going to burn him with the cigarette? Yeah. Don't do that. Save it. Face. Oh, oh shit. That's so messed up. Haven't seen you in a few days. Where you been? Been busy. Busy, huh? Yeah. Hey, oh. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> Grabbed me a couple of days ago. I did everything I could possibly do. But the book's on your tools. I'll, I'll replace them. Don't worry about the tools. Uh, gotta teach him how to fight. Where's your cousin live? In his car. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I don't want you to do anything. I don't want you to murder these people. People. If you need any extra tools, you just let me know. Give them a gun. Well, they got guns too, so I don't know about that. I could use a roofing hammer. Go in my garage oh, and get it. He just trusts you to go in there yourself now. Just say you love him. How far we've come. Oh, here we go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Now we get in the Grand Tour, you know. What are we do? He's still in the truck. He's still in the truck. <laughs> oh. F-150. Wow, wow, mother. Hey! Wow! <laughs> Damn. Damn, dude. Violence is interestingly, interestingly shot in this movie. Yeah. Here's the deal. You stay away from Tao, understand? Okay. I'll take that as a yes, because if I have to come back here, it's going to get ugly. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, my God, dude. Oof. Feeling lucky, punk. I was going to say... We ain't got ugly yet. Yeah, I have never seen Dirty Harry. You know what's funny? I think this might be my first Clint Eastwood movie. Whoa! I think it is. Wow. <laughs> I've seen a couple. I've I just, seen a handful. I just know about him through uh, cultural osmosis, but I can't recall another one I've seen. This is the first impression, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's good at this. But <laughs> this is the definitive way to meet Clint. <laughs> What happened to your knuckles, anyways? No, I slipped in the shower. No big problem. Over and over again. Now, young man, huh. if he doesn't ask you out, I'm gonna ask you out. Oh? I love to walk, but he beat you to it. Oh. Dinner and, and a movie or what? Yeah, the classic. Ooh. Classic. They're taking the bus. <laughs> Oh. oh, I wouldn't recommend a movie as a first date, but you know what? Good start. You're learning, kid. Gotta get you something more stylish than that. Like what? Take a limo? How about that? Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'd let you take the Grand Torino. Oh, no. Really? It's such a nice car. That's beautiful, but I'm so afraid now. Yeah. It's gonna get carjacked. Something bad gonna happen, yeah. Mm hmm Ooh, and the cousins uh. are coming back. <laughs> Damn car. Oh, drive shit. By, drive no, by. no, 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 no. Oh, shit. Are they even getting his house? No, they're going to the other house. <gasps> Damn, they, house did, house. they shot up Tao's house. Shit. No. Wow. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow. No, 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 no. Oh, Jesus Christ, no. Holy With the, is it the sister shit. and the grandma? Oh no, oh is no, what? Right? Dude, that shot, no! Oh my god! Yeah. What? No. Where is she? What the hell am I doing here? Oh, well, maybe some of her friends called and they changed plans. Oh, okay. She didn't. She didn't die. She just wasn't at the aunt's house. Oh, whoa! Jesus Christ! Oh my God! What? Oh. For a second, I thought he was gonna like smash it in his hand. Same, same. That. Oh no! Oh, oh that's no. cruel. Oh no, no, no! That is cruel. Oh boy, oh boy, yeah, we gotta oh boy, get him. oh boy, oh boy. We gotta get him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, Ooh, not the glass, not the dude. glass, Clint. Gotta break some shit. Oh, man. Oh, buddy. Oh, 
far we've come. Wow, what a shot. Yeah. Just want to really love and care. Oh, the priest. Hey. We called him over this time. He's ready to confess. Tao and Sue are never going to find peace in this world oh. as long as that gang's around. Nope. I took Sue to the hospital. She's scared. Yeah. Tao especially. He's sitting out there right now staring at your front door. You know what he expects, Mr. Kowalski. What would you do? <laughs> if I was Tao, I guess I'd want vengeance. I want to stand shoulder to shoulder with you and kill those guys. <laughs> I know you're close with these people, but this pisses me off too, Mr. Kowalski. <sighs> Woof. What are you going to do, Walt? I don't know. Think of something. Whatever it is, they won't have a chance. <laughs> I'm coming for him. Do something a little good, a little bad, <laughs> a little ugly. Let the Lord sort out the rest. <laughs> I know you don't want to hear this, but now's the time to stay calm. We stay calm or else mistakes get made. We have to step back from this thing. Oh. We got a plan. <laughs> plan it very carefully. Can't make any mistake. You know I'm the right man for this job. <sighs> so I want you to go home and stay calm and come back here at four this afternoon. And what needs to be done will be done. Ten dollars American. Here's a twenty. Keep the change. It's just in case you hit my juggler. <laughs> <laughs> you are literally his only customer. <laughs> ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no one's ever in here with you. I never had a fitted suit before. Yes, sir. Looking sharp. We're getting ready for war. I'm here for a confession. Oh, mm. Jesus, what have you done? Nothing. You just take it easy now. <laughs> what are your sins, my son? Oh, boy. 1968, I kissed Betty Jablonski at the factory Christmas party. Dorothy was in the other room with the other wives. Oh. Well, I made a $900 profit selling a boat and a motor. I didn't pay the taxes. It's the same as stealing. Oh, boy. I was never very close with my two sons. I, I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. That's it? That's <laughs> it. A whole lifetime not confessing and that's all you got? That's not it. You sure there's nothing else you want to tell me? Nothing happened in the war. Go in peace. Oh, I am at peace. Oh. <laughs> Solution's mine. You ever fired a weapon before? No. Jeez. <laughs> 1952, we were sent up to take out a chink machine gun nest. Oh, God. I was the only one that came back that day. For that, they gave me a silver star. Oh. Here, I want you to have it. Oh, that's not what I expected. How many men did you kill in Korea? Thirteen, maybe more. What was it like to kill a man? You don't want to know. Interesting. You don't want to know. Oh, he's locking him in there. Yeah. He's going to do it himself. Yeah. Oh, God. I had a feeling that was going to happen. What are you doing? Let me out. I'll kill you with a gun. Oh. Want to know what it's like to kill a man? Well, it's goddamn awful. That's what it is. The only thing worse is getting the Medal of Valor for killing some poor kid that wanted to just give up. That's all. Oh. Some scared little just like you. I shot him right in the face with that rifle you were holding in there a while ago. Oh. You don't want that on your soul. I got blood on my hand. That's why I'm going it alone tonight. Yeesh. I'm proud to say that you're my friend. Oh. But me, I finish things. And I'm going it alone. Na, 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 na. Ah. Oh, buddy. Who's going to let him out? Yeah. What if Walt doesn't come back from this? Yeah, I have to imagine this is his last ride. Is he giving him doors? Yes. This is her, her Daisy. Dorothy was his wife. Daisy's the dog. Hello. It's Walt. The keys to my house are under the ceramic okay. turtle on the front porch. Yep. Yeah, gotta I gotta go. Uh. Over here. Over here. I'm gonna light this right now. Oh, what's going on? He left for fun. You wanna smoke? He's with me. Maybe you should have waited to let her know. <sighs> Eddie Swamp is in there. I didn't think your ass would have came. Shut up. Oh. Uh. I got nothing to say to you, shrimp. Midget like you. Oh. You go ahead and watch out for your boyfriend. Because it was either he or you or someone who, one of their own family. So where's Tao at? That motherfucker couldn't come? Don't worry about Tao. Tao's got not one second for you. Oh, man. Oh, no. Gonna do the punk oh, bitch. Asshole, man. This is gonna light. Military snare. I've got a light. What did he do? And I'm gonna let it shine. Hail Mary, full of grace. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh. Damn. Jesus. Ooh. Yeah, they lit him up. They... Oh my god. Oh. Wow. Oh, 
Oh, in the Grand Torino. What happened? You need to step back. He's a friend of mine. He said step back. Oh, he didn't yeah. bring it. Officer Chang, get so, those people back. Damn. Oh, Just let them do it to themselves. <laughs> Walt Kowalski once said to me that I didn't know anything about life or death <laughs> because I was an overeducated 27 year old virgin who held the hands of superstitious old women and promised them eternity. <laughs> Hmm. But he was right. I knew really nothing about life or death until I got to know Walt. And boy, did I learn. Wow. And I want to leave my house to the church boy. because <laughs> Dorothy would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to leave my 1972 Grand Torino to... Nah. Not you, Chuck. Not you. My friend, Tao Van Lore. On the condition that you don't chop top the roof like one of those <laughs> Oh, jeez. And don't put a big gay spoiler on the rear end like you see on all the other Ned's cars. <laughs> <laughs> if you can refrain from doing any of that, it's yours. Oh, him oh. and Daisy. And what you see or what you've done. Is he singing? Just wondering. Wow. Wow. Directed and produced by Clint Eastwood. Clintifer Eastwood. Wow. Whoo, man! I need a second here. I always love when a movie just like picks a shot and lets the credits roll over that. Yeah, I just let you sit and marinate in it for a second. Wow, man! What a movie! Yeah. Yeah, man. It's one you just gotta like. Unpack, you know, and you gotta know, like sit with every now and again. You see a movie where you're just like, ah, I just kind of want to sit and reflect for a moment, yeah, just <laughs> simmer upon oh. what I've just watched and its, uh, its themes and its characters, and all the great racist slurs I can start using in my own life. <laughs> JK. <laughs> Reject Nation, as as a business owner, <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually terrible at uh, tracking finances, believe it or not. It's something I work on a lot because I can be forgetful. I can have terrible oversight when it comes to tracking things. And I'm sure you can understand the uh, immense hatred that comes with the feeling of forgetting to pay for something or the feeling of consistently paying for something you forget to cancel or something that you just simply haven't thought about in a while, so you keep paying for it which is the same thing as what I just said. Anyway, that's why I started using Rocket Money about a year and a half ago, and that's today's sponsor. And it's always cool to be partnered up with a product that you've already been using before you started doing a sponsorship with them because it makes it more natural. But seriously, Rocket Money has taken care of a lot of the thinking for me and has been a massive lifesaver. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that simplifies managing money by canceling unnecessary subscriptions, lowering bills. Rocket Money does the heavy lifting by analyzing your spending, then customizes notifications to help you stay within your budget goals. I was relieved to know that over 74% of people, not 75, but 74 specifically, forget about subscriptions they do not use. I was paying for things I don't even remember subscribing subscribing to, odds are with some free trial that I forgot to cancel. But one of the best things about Rocket Money is it finds those things and makes it effortless to cancel. What I really love about Rocket Money is organization. It keeps everything in one place. Imagine seeing all your subscriptions with just a tap and being able to cancel the ones you don't want. It even compares your spending month to month, so it's been able to help me stay on track with bettering my spending. And one of the great benefits too, I can absolutely attest to this, Rocket Money can also negotiate lower bills for you up to 20%. With over 5 million users, and $500 million saved in canceled subscriptions. It's helped people on average save up to $740 a year. So stop wasting money on things you don't use like old Greg did. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash rejects. Once again, that's rocketmoney.com slash rejects. Help up your game in being financially responsible and reap the dang benefits, people. <laughs> the list of... Uh of many colorful insults <laughs> Mr. Clint Eastwood wrote up himself and used in this film. You can hear all of those on uh, Apple or Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good segue. Rate five stars for each one. Jesus. Oh, goodness. Well, what did you think, sir? I thought this was a very good movie. Uh, yeah, this is my... As far as I can remember... Kyle or, or Eastwood think, on the music? Kyle Eastwood? There's another Eastwood? 
I want to say this is my first Clint Eastwood movie. And you know what? It didn't disappoint. It was slower paced. It was character driven, you know, and I like the fact that this movie didn't feel the need to sanitize its characters, but portray them in a very authentic light with Clint Eastwood. You know, he didn't just become automatically not a racist anymore and just like devoid of his 50 years of experience and um, and traumas and, you know, war conditioning that kind of formed who he is in this elder age. But the fact that he was able to be somebody that found a sense of you know, belonging or, or community amongst these people who he once viewed as as other or or as some form of, you know, enemy because of his own experiences, but was able to find camaraderie in that. Yeah. I think that's like the crux of the story, you know, and I think that's there's there's beauty in that being able to find a sense of peace in the end of your life and being able to find love uh or you know, a sense of, of kinship within that and, uh, and watching him and both uh, Tao kind of bond was very much like inspiring. It was very, you know, it was, it was unique. It was, it was a dirty and like, I don't agree with everything that happened, but you know, that's not <laughs> the point of it. That's the point is he took this kid that was isolated and alone and he mentored him into maturity. Yeah. And then watching this sister of his, who just had such this open heart and a lot of patience for this guy who was just like throwing insults at her, like a thousand miles a minute and her, her being the, the gateway to open his heart up to an ex- a life or the experience of the end of his life where he's able to allow people in. I feel like that's ultimately what it's about finding peace among finding peace at the end of your life and dealing with the fact or coming to terms with the, the death you've caused in the face of your own death and, you know, recovering or experiencing that, that leg of life after you've lost someone so, so close and intimate to you. Yeah. And yeah, it was, oh, I had Clint no expectations for the movie. Wow. That's cool. Uh, I had no expectations for the movie, but I do like how, authentic it is in its way that it um yeah just let the story unfold and just you, it's obviously Clint Eastwood's the main character of the movie and you know we see everybody there but yeah that's ultimately what I got to say for now and until we like kind of dive in deeper Rabbit. but yeah yeah what about you man yeah no I mean I, I remember when this came out and and you know it's can't remember where we are in terms of like the the shift where Clint really starts to direct a bunch of the movies. I feel like there's you know a, a phase where Clint is mostly the actor, and then after a certain point, you know he's acting and stuff that he's directing at least. And uh, yeah, I, I, I was really uh, uh, pulled into this, and it is an interesting character study in a sense because you know you do spend so much time just observing this guy's life and observing you know the sort of isolation and loneliness he forces on himself sometimes very overtly due to his like you know uh, direct attitude about things but a lot you know having to do with just yeah things he doesn't quite know how to confront or address or articulate or even probably fully feel in a way where you can, you know, connect that to other people. And it's, you know, nobody has to put up with racism in their life. Nobody has to, you know, uh, extend sympathy that isn't being extended them. However, I do think it's interesting to watch a movie like this that has a character who, yes, uh, certainly holds a lot of prejudice seemingly kind of across the board for everybody which i guess you know when you're you know it it, it, it was an interesting exercise in that thing where like it almost becomes endearing because he is just you know he approaches pretty much everybody this way (laughs) he hates universally yeah and not that that (laughs) makes it okay but it does make it interesting in the fact that you can then kind of look at his behavior the things he says but then you can also look at yeah the events of the story and be like okay so this isn't necessarily the most like 
hateful guy who's just out here trying to, you know, wreck people's lives. He mostly just wants to be left alone because he's got a lot of trauma and he doesn't know how to deal with that. And he grew up in a time where, yeah, things were different. And so, like, I thought it was really endearing to, yeah, watch Sue. Like, nobody has to take the interest that she took, but watching as, yeah, she kind of sees past this to the lonely guy that he is. She knows that he's, you know, at least you know, living on his own. He's the last guy. I, I like that. And, and you, you know, kind of highlighted that during the reaction, that idea that, yeah, like instead of being a minority family in, in a gentrified zone, it's, it's a place where like everyone is leaving, you know, and then the property values are kind of run down. And are, I feel like, was that Lake Michigan we're staring at at the end? I remember when, when the so. car pulls away, there's a Michigan plate, uh, which would make sense because that's a, certainly a part of the country that's had a lot of struggle uh, you know, and, and, you know, has been sort of, um, I don't know, like the glory days I feel like are sort of long behind and, and rebuilding is struggling to happen. And it's a place that whenever we see it in film, it's always very distinct and it comes with a lot of atmosphere. And I am curious about like the amount of research that went into a script like this, because yeah, just again, having, you know, I, I don't know much of anything about Hmong culture uh, and, you know, the different ethnicities that make that up. And, you know, I get the sense that, yeah, at least as it's encapsulated here, you know, that experience partly is uh, tied to where you're from. But, you know, being that in, it encapsulates a few different pockets of you know, Asian uh, uh, people of various Asian communities, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get the sense that some of that also has to do with them being here, you know, having moved here and are kind of being lumped into this category and, again, living on the skids to some degree. This is interesting, and it seems like it would be something that would have to, yeah, take a good amount of research and then you have, yeah, you like this gang that's roving around with Tao's cousins, but you also have, like, other gangs. Like, there's a little bit of everybody here and it is interesting that like Clint is sort of like the only white dude besides Scott Eastwood uh, in this environment. Another white lady who lives across the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old lady across the street. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's like there's so many like when we the, like we see the rest of his family and they're clearly in a different place. <laughs> like they're right. clearly in a nicer house in a different part of town. And uh, and yeah, like I, I thought the way they again, drew this unlikely bond between him and Tao and the way they use the car, uh, you know, the, the titling the movie Gran Torino and having, uh, you know, that be this motif I thought was interesting because ultimately, yeah, it's not really about the car at all uh, other than it is this catalyst for this real, uh, for the biggest, you know, arc and, and change and, you know, sacrifice and redemption and all that stuff. You know, if he hadn't tried to steal the car, who knows where this story would have gone or not, probably just not gone at all. Um, and so, yeah, watching both as Sue breaks down his barriers, watching him be drawn into, uh, you know, reluctantly, but just kind of like be out of exasperation, giving up and just being like, yeah, you know what? Fine. I'll come to your barbecue. I'll come to your you know gathering. I'll, I'll let your shaman read me whatever, you know, <laughs> and, and watching. Yeah. As he just sort of acclimates to them and, and you recognize the familiarity. And so, yeah, even though he doesn't like shed his, uh, you know, personality there's, I still really bought it when he's like, you know, I'm proud to call you my friend. Like we are yeah. actual friends and like watching him help Tao get the job and watching him sort of mentor him. I thought though, just the way all that stuff moved uh, was really graceful. And so, yeah, starting out at, you know, the wife's funeral, which ostensibly is sort of like the last thing tethering him to, to you know, any kind of lust for life <laughs> seemingly right. and then looking at his family and, and it's interesting too, because, you know, he does confess at the end and he's like, yeah, I, I have never really had a great relationship with my sons and by extension, you know, their kids, their wives, every, you know, the, my extended family, my immediate extended family. Too. Yeah. And, and you feel that, you know, from the very first scene without him having even to say it, but, you know, the perspective on why that is is interesting. And I like that you have moments like the call that he shares when he actually calls his son up and is just like asking him questions and like trying to just have like a chat. And, you know, that scene like played nicely because on the one hand, yeah, you wish the son would like drop everything and have a meaningful conversation. But 
in reality, I feel like it would kind of play out the way it did there where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever, I'm busy and stuff like that. But once the call ends, you can tell that they're both affected in different ways. Clint doing having done, you know, sort of what he hasn't been able to do for so long, at least in some kind of ritual, you know, gesture. And then the son being like, oh, shit, I think something's different. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like this is out of the ordinary. Um, and like the priest, I thought he was a great character. I really liked their back and forth. And uh, again, just the gradual nature of all the developments. And uh, yeah, just watching this callous, abrasive guy, you know, slowly reveal, you know, a certain level of charm and character, you know, and and we don't need a bunch of war flashbacks like we get the point uh from just his face and his demeanor and the way he talks about death right um and i like too that this was like yeah it gears you up to want to have like a big ass revenge movie kind of ending and i really liked the way they chose to go because they really make you think and believe and and it's like you know for tau i'm sure he's kind of playing that up because you know i'm sure in the moment that's what's going to make him you know, listen the most, I suppose. But yeah, having it ultimately be that his plan is just to go and let them cook themselves because, you know, he's calm and in control, essentially. And uh, and yeah, he just lets them, you know, in their uh, uh, angst and just general kind of, you know, they're a gang, they're, they're tough guys, but, you know, in a situation like that, I'm sure they're all jittery and trigger happy, and he just oh, lets yeah. them take care of the situation himself, and it's like a beautiful, that was like kind of a beautiful thing, he's like willing to, yeah, to, to die for these kids, essentially, because of, you know, the, the t- terrible things they did to Sue, as well as just the constant, uh, you know, victimization of Tao, and the constant effort to try and pull him down to their level, uh, and yeah, like the way Tao even goes from like not talking much at all to, you know, opening up and really revealing personality and, you know, taking on some of that, you know, more abrasive or, or sort of, uh, you know, tough, manly kind of exterior is like charming. And uh, and yeah, I thought this was really nicely done. And then it's yeah, it, it manages to present this character in in Walt who like, yeah, obviously you know, there are some things that could be better about the way this guy handles situations and, and communicates with people and looks at people. However, uh, you know, it, yeah, it, it, it allows you to see who the person is that got this way. And it doesn't make like a bunch of apologies for all that stuff. But like, yeah, you, you can see like the character within and it is interesting, even if he's, you know, certainly not like the you know, uh, the most upstanding role model or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought this this was nicely handled and graceful and it had a lot of mood and atmosphere. And and yeah, it just went in a direction that felt very, it felt, like, it felt right, but it also yeah. subverted what I thought was coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that it had a lot of subtlety to it too. Yeah. Like, ironically, the fact that this movie did deal with uh, a guy who was very racist and like in some capacities, like not culture, like in, in this, I guess in that sense, like a little immature. I felt like this movie was a very mature. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it a coming of age story, maybe like uh, com- partially, but I think that a little it bit was, for Tao certainly. Yeah. yeah. For Tao, I would say definitely his coming of age, but obviously uh, Walt is the, it's the, like the a coming character. of spirit movie for Walt. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like that coming of spirit. Yeah. It's a very unique movie in that sense. I don't think I've ever seen a movie that's like this. And the fact that this movie is very mature and subtle is why it works so well. Is yeah. the fact that, you know, nothing is overtly said, you know, when uh, the sister comes back and you see that, well, first you think she, she like died, something happened, she didn't make it back. And then you were like, oh no, like she was assaulted, they attacked her. Yeah. I think and with them illustrating that without having to say that, I thought that was very strong uh, direction from Clint Eastwood. Mm-hmm. And also uh, a lot of the acting felt very natural, especially from Clint. I think he was just very much in his zone. His, his performances were very subtle. And the fact that he was, you can tell that he was this lonely guy who was like this guy who dealt with a lot of guilt and a lot of anguish but without them having to overtly spell it out until like they, they did say it at the end. But even in the course of the movie, you can kind of tell that that's what was happening with him. He was just very much um, 
yeah, in, in his own kind of world, you know, and he was not living. He was there to kind of go through his days until he inevitably died. And, you know, him embracing this family that lived next to him kind of brought a sense of, of life and purpose back into it. Yeah. And there's yeah. almost this, there is this kind of re- redemptive quality, you know, because he did have this heaviness for him inside of him for years over the fact that he killed an innocent kid and now he's going and uh, multiple i mean you know into a, another war zone one out of 13 yeah yeah to kind of redeem himself to save another kid like to save a life be, it, to re, uh make up for the fact that he uh took a life saved an innocent life to make up for the fact that he took an innocent life and, and he did it without it, violence as well yeah by only sacrificing his own life Exactly. Which he doesn't feel worthy of living anymore, certainly. Yeah, but you know, it's it's done with this sense of purpose. Because I imagine the the guy at the beginning of this movie would never even imagine uh, he would give his car to the kid who yeah. stole it, who attempted to steal it from him. And yeah, even from the conversation that you mentioned earlier with his son, and finding out that there was this relationship that was strained probably probably because all the guilt and shame and repression that he dealt with. He didn't know how to raise his kids because he just was so lost in his own misery that he kind of withdrawed from his family. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what light his wife brought to him. I imagine the, the kids were a lot closer to the mom, but because of that relationship and because of that lack of closeness or hell, even parenting from, from Walt that kind of yeah. forced them to figure out how to have a relationship with him that was distant. Like, and they didn't even want to help him kind of figure out the next step of steps of his life. They just wanted to like alter him off or push him off to someone else that would deal with him. Like, Oh, we don't want to deal with this house. We also don't want to deal with our father. So we're just going to continue to uh, off put that care and off put that relationship into someone who's better equipped to, to handle that. And that was sad. Someone who wants us here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and it was sad, but it was also endearing the fact that these people who he had this program disdain for were so welcoming and so loving towards him that he had no choice to submit to that love and, and that grace from both um, Tao and his sister and the rest of the family as well and the fact that he got to a place at the end of the movie that he entrusted them with his closest living connection which was Daisy to that family is just a sign of how much he's grown and the car that he helped build and the car that he yeah. helped build as well and his tools you know I'm sure we didn't see it but I have to imagine like he probably left all the tools yeah all the probably- tools to him as well well that's that's an interesting thing too is I bet that like his wife was probably like with with Sue and, and Tao and everything, especially Sue, like, you know, I feel like he he almost seems like a character who needs somebody with, like, that much compassion who can also just see past the veneer so effortlessly, and I bet that's who the wife character was, and I bet totally. she was the glue that held him to the rest of the family. Totally. And so, yeah, it's like, as much as they are kind of characterized in a way where it's like, ah, I don't, I get why you don't like them that much i'm sure that 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 is that way for mutual reasons not just because of them i'm sure he it's demonstrated throughout the film that he's not really one to pull them toward him anyway um but yeah like i thought this had really nice all around i thought this was really nicely handled just as an endearing character drama i thought it was really uh well paced and well drawn and just the atmosphere the lighting the cinematography all that stuff you know, the way it's captured and the mood that they're able to strike in so much of this and so many of those somber, just quiet moments in big empty rooms and, and in church and things like that. Just, yeah, yeah, I thought this was really well handled. Yeah. And uh, great cast across the board for the most part. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this quite a bit. Same. Same. I agree. Well, gang, what'd you think of Gran Torino? I don't know what to ask you guys. Make it appropriate, though. <laughs> Rank your uh, Clint Eastwood film, Clint Eastwood films down in the comments, and uh, we'll see what else we might be able to check out from the man's oeuvre. Um, and leave us your thoughts on this movie. Anything about uh, you know any of the cultural elements you want to expound upon? Would love to hear that. Some um, interesting facts about the culture and his career, and I guess the setting that this movie took place in yeah Yeah. anything you feel worthy of adding just let us know absolutely and uh, we will catch you on the next one much love and uh, we'll see you soon cheers